Welcome to the greenpill.network podcast. In September, Green Pill will be hosted by the Cartographers, a high context community of individuals and teams dedicated to advancing the Web3 Grants ecosystem. They'll explore the Web3 Grants ecosystem with topics ranging from novel funding mechanisms, grant councils, and governance to emerging trends like AI and direct to contract incentives. This series seeks to bridge theory and practice by examining real world examples and featuring discussions with those who are closest to the action. The next voice you hear will be Sav, who contributes at Gitcoin and founded the Cartographers. Sav will be hosting this entire season. And I think that it's going to be a great season because Sav brings deep experience in Web3 grants and capital allocation. I'm excited for you to hear some of the perspectives from him and his guests. Without further ado, the next voice you'll hear is Sav. Enjoy. Hello, Coordination. We are back again with another episode of the Green Pill Podcast. As you know, we've done a few now on the Optimism Collective and some different things going on in the ecosystem. I've got with me a couple of members of the Optimism Grants Council that I also serve on. And in this mission, we're going to talk a little bit about intense missions and metrics, really the, the job of the Optimism Grants Council. And for this one, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the day-to-day work that the Grant Council does outside of those super chain grants. And so uh, with me today, I've got Ghana, who is the Grants Council lead, as well as Jesse, who's a mission reviewer like myself on the council. Um, so let's jump in. So Jesse, I think I'll turn it over to you first. Maybe give us a quick introduction and how you found your way to the Grant Council. Yeah, of course. So actually, I started out contributing uh, in the DAO as an ambassador, kind of creating content uh, and also participating in early stage um, governance as a delegate uh, and a council member as well. Uh, then I went to the foundation um, where I was a community or, uh, contribution manager there for a while. Uh, now I've actually come back full circle uh, to working for the DAO uh, as a Grants Council member, uh, an Optimism mission reviewer, uh, and also a delegate, but uh, I still host some Optimism events like Super Chain Demo Day. Um, and that's that's my life story. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Right on. Ghana, give us your intro. 2020, I close shop. A friend gets to me and says, hey, I need someone that knows how to be a developer and at the same time manage a lot of people given my background uh, and i said yeah sure i have nothing to do you know <laughs> i'm locked down here and so we started ethan out to train developers at a senior level from web 2 to web 3 uh, on a tailored manner uh, but he wanted my, my 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 partner wanted to to do a DAO. So he said, you know what, I'm going to train developers because that's my magic and you do everything else, you know, about a DAO. So I was like, okay, I need to know what a DAO is, you know, that's how it started. Uh, it went well. And at some point we needed a multi-sig. Ethereum was too expensive for us. We were a small project. So we decided to go with Optimism because Ale was working at, at Synthetics that was deployed in Optimism back when Optimism needed to be whitelisted. And so we were a public good since the beginning. We still are a public good. So Optimism when felt right when they opened governance for public goods. It was a pure coincidence, but uh, it, it was the perfect alignment for us. And when governance opened, it was like, okay, so I, I'm here. My multi sig is here. I want this to thrive. I like public goods because that's how we think about it, open source, you know? And so let's participate in this. And here we are. <laughs> I started by applying to grants. So I lived all that process before becoming a, a grants council member. Then I, I run ops with Dane as a Grants Council lead, an amazing guy to, to be the first one to lead the Grants Council. And then he left and I basically took leadership of Grants Council. But what I like is that I, I didn't came from outside into a leadership position, but rather build up that in with experience, you know? Totally, totally. No, we see that every day in working with you. The context is definitely important in helping to connect the dots that way. So we definitely appreciate that. As we jump into the episode, really, we want to take a look at structure and purpose of the Grants Council, talking through kind of this concept of intents and how those lead into missions and then what, you know, our roles are, you know, in that um, in terms of how the mission requests execute the intents, our metrics driven approach to kind of evaluating grant impact, which is something that's been really cool for me to see and kind of participate in. And then just the evolution of the process over time. And so 
Um, maybe to kick it off, Ghana, I'll kind of turn it over to you to just give us, the listeners, you know, a very high level on this concept of intents. Like, how does the DAO express those? How does that feed into those intents becoming mission requests? And like, what's the role of the Grants Council in that process? Okay, so to understand intents, you need to understand that optimism and governance have uh, seasons, right? You, you have two seasons per year. And basically, uh, w- what the intents define is the scope of the season. Where, what do we want to accomplish during this season? You know, it's a six-month period. What do we want to accomplish? So an intent is basically something that the foundation proposes and the token house ratifies on each season. And it's, okay, this is what we want to accomplish as a collective during this period of, of time. But this season is bringing developers into the ecosystem. There's many ways to do it. The foundation is doing it by their own missions. We are doing it uh, with the mission requests, uh, but but basically it's a way to align everyone into the same objective. That's what the intent of a season is, basically. Right on. Jesse, anything you might kind of add to that in terms of, you know, what your experience has been and kind of like seeing over time how those intents are established, maybe how those have evolved, and then, you know, your role as a grant council member and kind of helping um, with the concept of mission requests and how those relate to the intents. Yeah, um, one of the things that I kind of wanted to add to that as well, put it very nicely, where it's kind of, you have intents align the entire collective behind one strategic goal. Uh, And so everybody is kind of pushing together in the same direction, which also includes the kind of uh, foundation, unlimited labs uh, and you kind of see that uh, in intent to uh, that's kind of or that is bringing chains to the super chain, right? Uh, that's an effort for uh, labs, the foundation, and uh, unlimited, whatever, whatever you'd like to kind of call call that entire group of optimism. And then there are other intents that the grants council is kind of focused on. And under those intents, there's mission requests attached to each of those intents, uh, as well as kind of north star metrics that are associated with each one of those uh, mission requests and the kind of idea of North Star metric is we have to have a way to um, measure how much impact uh, different types of grants uh, have, right? Whenever uh, we give them out, so we're using our, uh, our funds as efficiently and effectively as possible. Totally. And then our job in that really is the Grants Council. Um, You know, it's been really cool to participate in that where, you know, intents are really expressions of like those North Star goals that we want to hit as a collective and like that wider group that makes up the collective, right? Through that, there's this concept of mission requests, which, you know, I could almost liken mission requests almost to like RFPs, but, you know, they could be ones that could be multifaceted. And so you could potentially have multiple grantees or teams or individuals, groups, whatever, applying for these mission requests, and they may be able to fulfill different aspects of it, right? And so a big part of our job in that is, you know, is the Grants Council thinking through um, what are those intents and then what are missions that we could propose um, that would help to contribute to that? And so that's our role. And then as we propose those mission requests, so if I come up with an idea and say, this is a mission request. It has to go through a process of acceptance and governance to essentially be ratified, you know, um, by the the collective. And then once that happens, I kind of become the captain of that mission request in a way that um, I steward it. You know, I'm the one that has the highest context on it. I own it, right? Um, but I work with the wider grant council in terms of how those are evaluated driving grantees to them, et cetera, right? So maybe we'll kind of, you know, step there since so much of the role of the Grants Council is really around these missions and like the stewardship of that. Um, You know, Ghana, I know there's been some changes this season where, you know, now we kind of have mission requests on like a rolling perspective. Um, It's something where we're really driving for more community engagement so people can propose mission requests and be sponsored. And so we're opening up that function a little bit more Um, Maybe talk us through just what that looks like. And if I'm someone today that is participating in the collective and I have some ideas around intents and how optimism may be able to address those via missions, what could I do, right, to put those ideas together and start the process of those potentially becoming mission requests? 
Okay, to I think to understand mission requests, you need to step back for a second, understand that when the collective decides on an intent, they also decide. Uh, so when we get into the first weeks of the season, the Grants Council needs to decide how to allocate that budget in mission requests, right? And that's a big part of it because you need to know many things. And when I say many things, it's basically understand where what the intent is, but at the same time, what, what it's being done by OP labs and the foundation, uh, and you need to coordinate all that into, okay, these are the, the issues that we're having as an ecosystem. And as a grants council member, I need to allocate these this OP tokens into solutions for those problems, for those issues, you know? The difference between this season and the, the previous season uh, the top 100 delegates were able to propose mission requests, but being a top 100 delegate doesn't mean uh, that you have the entire context or, or a higher context. And at the same time, it produced uh, something very uncomfortable where uh, Grants Council members need to review mission requests that they do not agree on, but are voted by the token house. So basically what we did is... What, what the foundation proposed this season was, okay, let let the Grants Council be that high context group that knows what is happening in OP Labs or the foundation, or at least knows the scope, you know, uh, and can be figuring out what the issues are and what the mission requests we need to solve those issues. We also sponsor any mission requests that we see fit. It's not that it's a close gated process where we say what to do and, and that's it. If, you, if you're a community member and you have a great idea, you can put it in the forum and we will pick it up and sponsor it. I think people believe that the biggest issue is to create mission requests, but for me, it's actually understanding the, the issues that needs to be solved in the industry. You know, The thing that I'm trying to pick up from the community is, okay, where are you having problems and how can we figure that a solution for that problem into a mission request? Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I see working with grant councils often where when you're just getting started, maybe you're post TGE or you're looking to build out basic infrastructure, you know, on your chain, whatever it might be. Some of the same things that maybe some of the super chain grant programs are looking at. You have a different charter than we have at the scale that optimism is operating at today. Right. We're really, you know, for us there, it's how do you grow the wider super chain and, you know, kind of this this broader ecosystem versus just a specific network, right? And so when I look over time at kind of like that evolution in the early days of optimism, optimism grants, even when we started with retro funding, it seemed like we were more focused on like building out critical infrastructure and building out the infrastructure needed to kind of scale. And I think that I've seen that we're in an interesting place now where we started to achieve that scale Obviously, there's more, you know, L2s running on OpStack today um, than others. And so that we're seeing some great traction that way. But then to your point, we have to start to think about like, what are the next level kind of like issues and problems that we need to solve that really unlock more of that future growth, right? And that can get into some, we'll just say dicier topics around education, you know, and community engagement and these things that are really important, but they can be hard to break down quantitatively, or maybe the only ways you can break those things down quantitatively can be gamed, right? And one could argue that TVL and active users and these metrics can also be gamed, but you know, so can impressions and things that you may look at from like a social marketing perspective to show traction, right? So yeah, you know, I, I, I'm i curious your guys' thoughts on that, right? I know, Jesse, you work quite a bit on the community side. Um, so maybe I'll I'll let you answer there first and Ghana, let, let you kind of tag on to that as well. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting dilemma. Um, so I go about this kind of solving it in, in a different way. So speaking of like mission requests, right, there was the subsidize, so a, a very popular um, mission request that um, many people in the community and the collective seem to think add a lot of value are kind of subsidized audits, right? And that's been proven out over I, a couple of seasons, having 
good subsidized audit providers to provide subsidized audits projects in the ecosystem ideally helps bring in developers right and so then um my kind of thinking goes to well what other services could that program apply to or could we apply that kind of model of subsidized audit services right it's like that is a the community the collective kind of finds that valuable, right? So trying to figure out the places uh, or okay. other services that the collective uh, finds valuable and then kind of building a nice process or wrapper around those services with maybe whitelisted service providers who hey, say, I provide this marketing service, right? And we all know uh, that this marketing service provider has proven to add value to projects in the past uh, in so then maybe there's an opportunity where we have a service provider that say provides marketing or some other service uh, to projects that have been proven valuable, trying to add kind of a process wrapper around that where those service providers can then come in, ask for, hey, I want this portion of a grant to provide this marketing or other service to this project. And then somebody reviews that in some way where it's, where it's verified um, or it kind of goes through some review process in order to get that grant out to that specific service provider to provide that service to that project. And kind of what I'm describing there is is very similar to what we have now with, with a subsidized audit process where mm-hmm. wait, waitlist service provide or waitlist audit service providers, projects come in to apply for these subsidized audit services, and then grants council reviews them to give the grant or not or to approve the grant or not. We actually talked about that on the last episode a little bit where, you know, it's very common and kind of like the Web2 world, Google GCP, Amazon, they have this concept of credits, right? And in some ways, that's a little bit of what we're describing here, right? There's been other common kind of like accelerator models. And I think Polygon and others had some in the past where um, they would whitelist these providers and then the wider ecosystem could tap into the help of those providers, right? And that would be still providing critical services and things that they need, but it's a little bit more, there's controls around it where we vetted and approved who can be used that way. Because you could run into a situation where we give funding out and that funding is used to fund a service provider, but maybe they're not qualified and ultimately that funding doesn't hit the impact. You know, and so we talked a little bit about this where we definitely use the audit example, right? The the mission request example. We also talked about optimism as a venture studio and how as we see more applications into that, if we see commonalities between those things, it could really lead us to say there there could be other examples of like specific service provider type mission requests that we should think about. And that could have even bigger implications as we look at downstream grant programs, super chain, et cetera. Because remember, now it's it's the Optimism Grant Council, but we also are growing those downstream programs across the super chain. You could run into a situation where you have lots of these new chains that are spinning up. There's lots of valid service providers out there that aren't on the list, right? But if we have a process that vets them and kind of makes sure that um, they're qualified for the work that they do, that just helps with assurances from the grant council's perspective that if you're using those credits, you know, working with someone in some way that we have better faith in the outcomes, right? So, Ghana, I know you had some things to kind of tag on to that. I mean, any thoughts from, from your end? I mean, you have to understand that the grants council members are members elected by the token house, right? You, you get elected by being voted by the token house. What I think that happened, uh, and it's not casual, but, it, but it's also very difficult to accomplish, is that right now the grants council is about 12 reviewers. But if you look at them, individually each of them it's an expert on something you know i mean if i if i need something about marketing or growth i'll probably ping jesse if i need something about grant systems and production i'll probably ping soft you know if i want to understand something about DeFi, i'll probably go with matt from synthetics and so on i mean if you look at the grants council it's a dream team you know <laughs> it's like a, a an expert on every topic that blockchain and crypto can 
ever touch. You know, you have someone in education, you have someone in DeFi, you have someone in investments, you have Katie, it's a VC investor. And I think we're going to accomplish it next season is connecting that expert with the issues that the industry are having and see how they can solve that. You know, so if we are having a VC problem, okay, let's talk with Katie, you know, what is what VC is like comes from the auditing thing that we, that Jesse was talking, uh, two seasons back, we decided, okay, but we need big firms, auditors, you know, Sherlock's, Perby, Cyphering, whatever. We created this RFG, this uh, request for grant where they could get a budget and we broke them in and it was great. And now they are working here in, in optimism. So what else do we need here, you know, as an industry that the grants council can bring in, you know, that, uh, so we are like some sort of glue between what OP labs is doing at a protocol level, what the foundation is doing at a governance level and how can we glue all that stuff with users and developers of the industry, you know? Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, yeah I, I see. Oh, go ahead. No, go for it, Jesse. No, I was just going to add on to that. I think I think you hit the nail on the head there. Where so much, so we have a diverse group of people in different areas of expertise on the grants council, and it's a little bit business development mix as well for the grants council, where you have these different people with different areas of expertise and kind of connections throughout the space, and so it's kind of relying on each one of those to kind of figure out what we'll say. Um, mission requests or things to put forward that may bring in these projects or help existing projects uh, in the ecosystem. Totally. You know, what I've definitely appreciated about the whole process is you're right. We are all elected members. And so we're accountable to that. And we need to be able to demonstrate that we're showing value and kind of like, how are we differentiated versus other members? Um, but how do we also work in kind of like that larger group, right? So I think the net net for the audience is like, the optimism is a collective and anyone can participate. And so much of our discussions happen on the forum, right? We're all fairly public figures there, right? You can see, you can easily reach out and, you know, kind of like engage with uh, the grants council as a whole or individual members. And so, you know, we encourage people to look at those intents, participate in that process, provide feedback, come up with, you know, good ideas. And let's see if we can work together on getting more mission requests out there, right? And from our end, you know, we put our name on something, we're, we're accountable to that, we're the captain of that. And so I think that, you know, the incentives are aligned in such a way that um, it, it kind of ensures that even though the process we go through in terms of making decisions on the grants themselves is fairly centralized, as many like direct grants programs are, there's a decentralized process around that that ensures that by the time things get to that stage, that they've been vetted through the collective, through kind of these different layers, right? That then we can really start to evaluate those mission requests on their merit. And we don't really have to question so much, is this even a grant worth fulfilling, right? Like, I think that by the mm -hmm. time we get something to, it's an accepted mission request, there shouldn't be a question in our mind that way. Um, and I think that is something that differentiates us, at least from what I've seen from many direct grant programs, in that the people making the decisions on the allocations are typically the same people that are making centralized decisions with probably very little community feedback on what are the grants that are actually being given out, right? So I think that actually leads quite well as a segue into my next point around like the, the metrics evaluation. Um, something I've really... Um, or the mission evaluation or the, the request. Something I've really like enjoyed participating in as part of the process is how we evaluate the different um, applications that come in, how there's layers to that process that honestly, outside looking in, when I came in, I was like, this is kind of complicated. Like every, you've got to go <laughs> through all of these stages, right? But now what I realize is they're all for good reason. And they ensure that by the time something gets to the final stage of evaluation, it's probably a fairly quality project on its merit. And then there's ways that we can break that down to an evaluation to a number, a weighted score, so that it makes it easier for us to kind of make final decisions on how we allocate that budget, you know, that Ghana talked about a little bit before. So to walk the audience through that process, we use Charmverse. Applicants submit their application to these mission requests. 
Um, and then as those come in, there's kind of different stages to that where we start with um, intake and metrics review, which is basically just a, a simple review to say, did you submit your application in a way that it ties back to key metrics? Does it make sense? Is this something that passes like the initial sniff test? Um, and then as it progresses through those phases, then we get to a place of like an evaluation, right? Where we take a look at a standard rubric that's been developed by Ghana and, you know, the rest of the team, take a look at how we give scores to these. And what I found really cool is like, we have that standard rubric. It's across a broad range of grants, but it's, fairly generally applicable to all of them and does a pretty good job of like applying like those weighted scores. And so John, I'm curious to kind of pick your brain around the, the time that you've been here. How has that evaluation process evolved, right? How did you get to a point that we started to develop these evaluation rubrics? And when you talk, I guess, last point on that is when you talk about maybe getting more domain specific, where if I'm the guy you want to come to around grants and incentives, or Jesse's the guy around marketing and those kinds of initiatives, do you see that rubric ever evolving where it's custom based on the mission request? Or do you see value in keeping it kind of like always generally applicable? So that's like a big question, but that, that's one thing I'm curious, kind of your thoughts on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. So first of all, the reviewing process goes through a rubric, you know, I don't know if you want to explain what a rubric is, but it's basically you have a set of questions and a score for those questions. And so review, what reviewers are doing are scoring each question, you know, like uh, you have, it's your grant size, correct. Zero points if it's too much and four points if it's, the use of the OP tokens are extremely well used, you know, so you get four points. Perfect. The more points you have, the better, right? That, that's how we filter. The evolution of the rubric was pretty tough, you know, um, fr from starting point to now, uh, basically because at the beginning we had just builders and growth grants. Those were the mission requests. Right. So you had to evaluate if you were bringing users or if you were bringing developers in two different rubrics. Perfect. Works amazingly. Suddenly, uh, next season, uh, we have mission requests and each mission re request had a different scope. And we ended up with, I think, 23 to 24 rubrics, each for one mission request. That was the previous season. We did it and it was fairly done, you know. But it was operational intensive. And at the same time, it doesn't give you like, um, so what a general rubric gives you is a sense of what is the top score for everything that it's applying, what is the lowest score for everything that it's applying, you know? And you can accomplish that if you use the same scoring for every mission request. But how do you do that by reviewing? A mission request properly, you know, and that that's that that's the point that we got now with the rubric where we experimented with so many rubrics during one year until we found sweet spot where we have a general rubric that can tell you if a proposal has enough points to be approved. You know, I think it's going to evolve, but I think it's going to evolve in a sense that we will give more open questions to the reviewer in the sense of uh, the discretionary factors that we have today. So uh, for people who doesn't know, the rubric has three discretionary factors when you, where reviewers can give zero to four at discretionary, you know, but they need to comment why, right? Uh, and I think uh, that's great because if Jesse sees uh, a lot of potential in, in, uh, in an application, and wants to keep more points, he, he has a way to do it and he has a way to justify why he's doing it, you know? And we trust on his expertise and the same goes for every uh, council member. So th that's how the, the evaluation process evolved, but there's a little secret there that I always, every time that I work on the rubric, what I'm asking myself if, is, okay, how do I say no to a friend? I mean, a friend calls and says, hey, I'm applying for a, for a grant. Can you help me out? You know, can you pass this grant because uh, we are friends and it will suck to our personal relation if you say no. And I'm like, you know what? Here is the, 
evaluation yeah. process. And there's the rules. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, and that saves me from corrupting the Grand Council, you know, uh, which is great. Uh, and I love it. Um, and I think it's a great way not just to avoid my friends from extracting OP tokens when, when they shouldn't, is anyone's friends. You know, we are 12 members. Uh, you have six people scoring your application. So even if Kevin has a friend or Jesse has a friend or Jack has a friend, you know, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a very fair scoring process. Mm -hmm. Totally. What's been your experience with that, Jesse, in terms of like working through that? And I think we've all got those reach outs from friends of, I really think I should apply to this. Definitely helps, you know, with those types of answers where it's like, well, here's the process and here's how it'll be evaluated, you know, but like, what, what's that look like for you kind of participating in the evaluation process? Yeah, I think i um, going to hit the nail on the head again. They're going to hit the nail on the head a lot of times with kind of structuring a system of grants that is, I don't want to say incorruptible, but um, it's less likely to be corruptible, right? And so because you have kind of shared responsibilities of everybody reviewing these different grants. The original question was what was my, or what's my kind of take um, or my experience with kind of friends coming to me uh, and asking for grants. First kind of example in my head is actually a non-crypto related one. I actually had a friend who is a plumber call me and say he was starting his own small business and was like, could you get me a grant? And I was like, you're not even on the blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I haven't had um, anybody who I was, who I've been friends with um, come and like ask for a grant. However, they have asked for my help uh with a grant right like what should i put on this give me suggestions can you give me feedback um and one thing that i've learned is uh you have to be careful to make sure that you're saying you know this is my personal opinion right i am one of 12 reviewers on the grants council um and i may not even uh be reviewing your evaluation and if there's kind of a conflict of interest uh you should definitely excuse yourself from reviewing um any mm -hmm. applications that you might have a conflict of interest in, especially if you uh, would potentially uh, gain or benefit uh, from the grant um, at the uh, if it if it was approved. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a tough situation to navigate because you're trying to give that or you're trying to be kind of responsive um, to them and not give them kind of hold shoulder because you want them to stay in the community and you want them to get a good feeling from interacting with the Optimism community and the Grants Council. But at the same time, you have to kind of tread tread that line and um, be careful um, of the advice that you of the advice that you give them. Yeah, you you also need to understand what the rubric does, right? The top score column of a rubric where you get the four points, it's telling you what the Grants Council is looking for, you know, as a group, not as a as an individual, not as me as a leader. It's just okay, the the, the rubric is conceived by the entire Grants Council. This is the top score answer that you can get, right? This is what we are looking for. This is what we are aiming. And if you're not getting elected, if, you, if you're not on the top score, then it means that your project is missing a key point or a few key points into that top score, you know, into what the Grants Council is looking for. So the, the great things about the, the rubric is just not a way to filter applications, but also a way to show what the Grants Council is looking to achieve. You know, yeah, and then we don't have members, you know, on this this meeting. But the the grants council is wider than just the mission reviewers, the grants council lead. You know, we've got members of what I would call kind of like the grant ops team that works with Ghana. So Bunnick isn't on mm -hmm. the call today, but he's the the beating heart of a lot of what we do. He helps with like load balancing of all the applications and just kind of making sure that things you know run generally well. And I think he does a great job at that. We have the developer advisory board. Um, which is a function that could kind of help us with more technical reviews. To Gunnar's points earlier, like, you know, sometimes there's evaluations that happen that are more technical in nature, right? And even though, you know, I've been around and worked in, you know, crypto and participated in the space since 2017, um, I'm definitely not the guy that you want evaluating kind of like smart contracts on their merit mm -hmm. and safety and those types of things. And so we have technical resources we can tap into for that kind of stuff. And then, 
where all this feeds into that I find kind of interesting, and I'm still learning a lot about that process, is if we're evaluating things through a, a rubric and we're expecting common metrics and those metrics have to contribute back to the intents, right? There's a follow-on team that kind of helps with accountability, right? And so their job is really taking a look at are we achieving those milestones? Are we hitting the metrics for those milestones? Is that creating the impact back to the collective that we anticipated, right? And, you know, for the listeners, there's some really interesting things going on with Optimism today. I mean, they're a very progressive player in the space when you just think about grants and incentives, where we touched on this with the Sunny Awards, you know, that we're kind of working on a little mm -hmm. bit too, where how do you start to take and find more verifiable metrics? How do you tap into the wisdom of crowds through retro funding, whatever it might be, and use that to kind of surface um, how you make decisions on allocations? And you know, one thing I've really appreciated about just participating in this ecosystem is you have like a variety of ways that that's happening, right? Like there's experimentation happening with the Sunnies, which I think is going to eventually lead to more almost direct contract incentives and taking human decision-making out of it where it's like verifiable metrics. You have retro funding, right? And kind of looking at things and funding based on previous impact and getting where that's less and less subjective. And then you have the teams with the Optimism Grants Council and the foundation that are doing more direct grants, but putting systems in place that ultimately tie all those things back to the metrics, right? And so, you know, for anyone out there in the audience that you're developing an ecosystem today, definitely the advice I would always give is like, what are the outcomes that you want? What do you want to achieve? And what is success going to look like six to 12 months from now? And how are you going to know you got there or not, right? And I think that what I've seen over time with grant programs is, Sometimes grant programs can really just be a function of marketing and creating buzz, which is great. Crypto runs on narratives. But at the end of the day, you don't want to look back and say, what did we actually do with all of those tokens? Right. <laughs> and I think we've seen that a few times, um, especially with, you know, the uh, early grant programs that were kind of spinning up. I mean, it started with the Ethereum Foundation and, you know, even like research type grants, right? And you saw just a, an explosion of programs in the last bull market. And that's personally where I got involved in all of this. And I just find a lot of interest in this topic is grant giving has been going on for a long time, ever since, you know, uh, countries have been printing currency, you know, creating, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of value, some amount of that issuance has gone to public goods and funding, you know, infrastructure, you look at open source software development, and um, look at how much that's contributed to like human progress over the last few decades. But when you look at those things, they're still mostly operating on like legacy nonprofit grant giving fundraising, you know, type approaches and, and grant giving approaches. And I think that that's one of the cool things that's happening in the crypto space is like we can program our money. We can program our values in it. We can verify things on chain. We can look at reputation. We can take all of these inputs and ultimately tie those to the impact of the output, you know, and kind of like allocations, right? So I'm, you can tell I'm biased as I say all of those things, but I'm seeing all of that happen across the collective, right? And like these different approaches that we have to grant giving. So we're coming up on the end of the episode. I think I would kind of like leave our guests each with, you know, a question and maybe Jesse, I'll start with you. What do you see kind of like the evolution looking like? Like we finished season six, I think we're on track to consume the budget against these mission requests, we've seen the applications rolling in, like my experience has been great. And I think we're on track to achieve the things that we were asked to do. As you look at kind of like future seasons, just maybe your opinion, your thoughts on that. How could you see the work that we're doing evolving? Um, and maybe how could you see the uh, Grants Council members, like our roles evolving? We kind of decide it together, right? So I think in future, like the great thing about uh, optimism governance, right, is that it's iterative in nature, right? So we have seasons, we adjust based on um, what we've previously seen, the entire system. Uh, but the real important thing is that we figure out how to structure it, uh, how to structure these future seasons together as a collective, which includes the foundation, unlimited uh, labs, the grants council, and everybody 
somebody else in the community, especially the top 100 delegates uh, and feedback council. Um, and so I think that we have this, um, this council, it's called the Feedback Commission, where the kind of foundation is able to kind of put plans forward for future seasons. And then the fee or, uh, a group of high context community members uh, are able to kind of look at that and go back and forth with the kind of structure um, so that we can kind of put something together that would be beneficial and agreed on um, by the most people possible or would maximize uh, future seasons um, together as a collective. Right on. How do you see that evolving, Ghana? I think what Jesse's trying to, to say here is that when you get more people to agree on something, you are it's a game of coordination, right? So what we're trying to achieve here is coordination between so many different things that are happening. And this goes back to, to just basic things like, um, you know, m money is a coordination game. It's a language, right? So Ether, it's a language. And what we're trying to achieve here is a different language to coordinate ourselves. When you think about, okay, what, what's my coordination game is what, what is the value that I'm bringing into that coordination, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, for example, uh, <laughs> I, I never wanted to be Grand Council lead, but I understood that my biggest skill was to coordinate, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not an expert developer. I understand code, but I'm not an expert developer. I'm not a finance guy. I'm not a, so I said, okay, I don't want the leadership and I don't consider myself the leader as, as someone that it's high there making big decisions, but more of a, okay, I have the, all these experts, they are all experts in something and I need to coordinate their vision, you know? And that's, I think what, what it's going to happen in the future and where Grants Council goes for the next season is, okay, now we figure how to coordinate the Grants Council as a Grants Council. Perfect. Now let's coordinate beyond that with the Grants Council, you know? Let's coordinate the vision of OP Labs and what OP Labs is doing inside with the Grants Council. Let's coordinate the, the foundation vision and what they are doing with the Grants Council, you know? And what else we can coordinate? Let's go one by one and let's try to coordinate everything that we can without giving all the power to Grants Council at the same time. You know, we, we, we want Grants Council members to be and everyone else deciding by themselves and we will just become like a bridge for everyone to be coordinated. You could not have given me a better segue to end the episode. As everyone knows, I'm sitting in for Kevin Owaki uh, this season um, for Green Pill. Uh, and as Many of you have heard Iwaki say many times, right? It's it's all coordination and it always has been, you know? And I think that when we look at the function of grants and kind of like incentives and allocation, um, it's been exciting to see, you know, how this process works for sure. And so we'll drop in the show notes for everyone that's listening, you know, details on how you can find the current list of intents. We've got those posted on a page um, in Charmverse where you can take a look at those. Encourage everyone in the audience to go and check out the Optimism Gov Forum if you haven't already. Um, lots of information in there. It's an open place where anyone can contribute. You know, if you've got good ideas or feedback, right? I would just encourage everyone, like, be constructive. You know, I think it goes back to kind of that old, um, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt that kind of said, like, uh, whining or uh, complaining without a solution is whining, you know? And so I think that there's an opportunity that way where, like, what are the solutions? You know, optimism. Uh, it goes through a process that expresses its intents. We've talked about how, you know, we drive missions out of those. So we're open to anyone in the collective proposing solutions, right, to the intents and the things that we want to solve for and sponsoring that. And for me personally, I hope, you know, when we move in kind of like the directions going forward, um, you know, I'd love to continue to participate in this process. And I think that, you know, being able to play each more to our individual strengths, but then depend on the the, the coordination of that greater collective and how we achieve the intents is going to be exciting to see. So appreciate everyone, you know, for jumping on the, the show today. It was definitely good to, to pick your brains and um, looking forward to working with you both as we, uh, we finish out the season. Yeah. Thanks for having us.